Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. As you can see on the screen, I'm doing something new today. So it's not about try guides, it's not about stuff that I usually do, it's about driving school. And in this video, I would like, like to talk about basics of GT Sport. So I will be, in general, I will be talking about sport mode and time trial. Next, we will go to daily race, where I will be explaining how to get your DR improvement and SR improvement. So in general, kind of an overview how to improve in daily race what matters and what actually doesn't matter in your daily race qualifying and time trial and etc so the next thing is reference point i usually like to mention my reference points so such as uh, let's say driving line braking and acceleration point so i will be talking in general about that what does it mean to be on the track and use those reference points and what does it mean to you and how to improve by using those reference points so and the next thing is braking balance and traction control just the general overview of that and what kind of effect uh, does it make to your tires so let's say your braking balance is at minus five what happens to your tires then if you're using the MR car so in this video I'll just be using one car and then in the next videos I'll just try to focus on a little bit advanced things and uh, just try to explain those so without further ado guys let's get going and now starting with our first thing that I'd like to mention and this is a sport mode uh, where you can usually find the FIA races and daily races daily races are usually and I mean always situated in here and you have a couple of those available each week so they're called dailies but they're actually weeklies and you can find the classes like the N class group 1, 2, 3, 4 and in some cases there are X classes like formula and stuff like that so usually the N class is the slowest one and the other ones are in general like uh, class 2 or maybe 4 some, in some cases you have the slower class and a little bit faster class and also you can find the top 10 times and see how are you handling uh, your race time according to those lap times so you, you can just find the top times and see the replay and actually find your breaking points and reference points so watching the replay sometimes can be really useful and before we get going to the next section I would like to mention this uh, actually it's a website and it's called Kudus Prime where you can find almost anything about your times in GT Sport and you can see your K speed score which is kind of a general overview of lap times and you can find your lap times since you started doing this GT Sport so your first daily is here and you can see what position in the top 10 uh, or according to top 10 you are in so i'll post a link down below where you can find this site and it's really helpful and you can actually have this overview of your dr and sr ranking and actually dr and sr history and i would seriously like to suggest here if you if you're doing the daily just try to stay clean so staying clean can i mean it just improves your sr rating by so much so just try to stay clean in each situation just try to kind of avoid hitting uh, someone in front of you or hitting someone because if you decrease your rating even further down below your uh, your dr will drop eventually so just try to stay clean and this is the thing i have to say about the next thing is what is actually important for your dr ranking so uh, usually i like to mention three things and the first of them is better starting position just try to focus on getting the qualifying time even up even if you're not a good driver just try to focus on that and achieve the better as best as possible uh, overall lap time so again the second thing here is better finishing position if you let's say finish in first place this is always the best so always try to go for that win always try to aim for the podium spots and yeah always try to improve and be better but it's not always that easy so actually the first thing is the most important as i previously mentioned time trial just do a lot of it maybe just focus on giving it an hour or two will eventually help your rating so so much so Another and last thing here is DR of other drivers in the lot. So let's say if you're kind of uh, in the midfield and around drivers around you are, let's say, a little bit slower than you, their DR is not so great. You will not be gaining a lot of time or a lot of DR if you beat those drivers. It was just not the way it works. So you need to beat the drivers who are actually who actually have a better DR than you do. 
And now in conclusion, I would seriously suggest to you guys, just try to stay clean no matter what happens in the race and always try to qualify better, which will actually eventually, I mean, lead to DR of other drivers will be much higher than your DR and you will get a lot of points and you will actually improve by a lot. Okay guys, and now let's go to the most interesting part of this video. So. I think uh, these are the reference points that I'm actually using in my track guys video like the barrier on the left hand side always you can find a lot of things that you can use for your references like uh, yeah I mentioned barriers you can use the 150 meter sign here the shadow beneath the 150 meter sign at the curb in front of you I sometimes use the beginning of the curb and sometimes I use the end of the curb for my reference points and yeah we'll be talking about braking and then acceleration so you gotta make sure that you use breaking points and reference points of course in the best way possible it actually helped me a lot so i would like to share with you guys so yeah just use anything you can find around you as i said the 150 meter sign is really obvious in here the barrier might not be so obvious but you can always find it on your left hand side or your right hand side depending on where you're standing and the curbs are always around you so guys uh, without further ado let's get going and now let's talk about the racing line. So the racing line is the best possible line you take into the corner and in some sections of the track, actually in most uh, sections of the track. It's hard to find, but if you don't have the perfect racing line, your time will be a lot slower than the top 10 guys. So here I would like to mention that I'm using, I'm always using the references here. So this time I'm using the 50 meter sign for my turning inputs. So when I reach the 50 meter sign, I start to turn. And always when I reach the 50 meter sign, I always start to turn in there. Sometimes it's, uh, I mean, it's not always perfect, but I try to stay uh, on the perfect racing line and just try to build that consistency and build the best time possible. So guys, yeah, as you can previously uh, seen, so downshifting in the second here and another thing, this curb in front of me is actually my next reference point when I upshift in the third gear. So you can, as I previously mentioned, you can use the curbs. You can use the curbs for anything possible, for braking. Uh, you can use it for downshifts, for upshifts, for pretty much anything. And yeah, yeah, I would really, yeah, I previously mentioned acceleration zone. So when I touch the curb, that curb was my reference point for acceleration. When I touch it, of course, and here, so this is a fast car, has a lot of traction, a lot of downforce. You don't have to worry about that. But in some other classes, those reference point might be well off of one uh, from another. And here, yeah, you can see the shadow in here. So this shadow is my next reference point when I start to break. Look at here, breaking in a straight line downshifting in the second and again when I touched this uh, curb uh, on the right hand side that was my reference point for acceleration another one so you can use pretty much anything around you and I seriously like to uh, drive it at this dragon trail track it's super easy track I mean it's not super easy it's super easy to learn but super hard to master so uh, I just used it and you can see the difference here and here again braking and just touching the curb here when I touch the curb but just wait a half a second and then going back on the power so uh, that curb on the right hand side was my reference and again references I'm always talking about references and this is I think these are the basics that need you, you need to learn about racing in general not just GT Sport you can translate it to let's say ACC you can try translate this to iRacing you just try to use references around you it might be a little bit of a feeling but yeah, references help so so much and it helped me in my racing and at the beginning of my whole racing uh, kind of a career. It's not a career, but it's uh, a serious hobby. <laughs> let's call it a serious hobby. And now let's talk about braking balance and traction control. So this traction control and braking balance impact your lap time by so much. So you can see on the screen I'm using the braking balance as minus five and I'll just try to show the effects of different braking balance. First we're gonna do this at minus five and next thing we're gonna use it at zero and then it's gonna be plus five. That will show the effects of tire wear and actually the braking balance, kind of the impact of braking balance on tire wear. And let's get going. So this first example will be showing the last corner of the track here. And now on the left hand side you have the braking balance at minus 5 and on the right hand side is at 0. So 
you can easily see the difference in turning. So the rear end of the car was just started to slide at braking balance at zero and the car is less twitchy at minus five. So if you want a stable car and just try to use minus five and you, if you're kind of an advanced player, you can start to abuse the rotation of the car. And rotation of the car is kind of uh, an interesting thing in GT Sport. So if you're using the braking balance at zero, the rear end of the car just starts to slide and in MR cars, it slides so much. It may be, I think in my opinion, is just too much. So I just try to use minus five or maybe in some cases minus two, minus three, depending on the tire wear and depending on the car. I'll try to explain those in my next videos, which will be most, most kind of more advanced not the most advanced and this one is at plus five so i killed my tires my rear tires were completely dead okay this is an over exaggerated example uh, my tire wear was i think at x25 so 25 times more than it usually is and you can see the rear tires they just they were unusable completely unusable and the fronts uh, here you can just see the difference from minus five zero and plus five the minus five here has the better tire wear uh, much better so in generally more equal tire wear the fronts and the rears were pretty much equal and on the zero you can see the effects that are going to the rear tires so the fronts were kind of okay but the rears just started to kick off and nowhere uh, i mean one more lap and you couldn't you couldn't possibly race on those tires and the plus five was completely useless i mean you cannot race on these tires so just try to uh, okay this example is an mr car it's the it's the audi r8 and i just like to use it for the for this exaggerated example and we have this as yeah i previously mentioned minus five zero and plus five minus five seems to be the best and plus five seems to be completely useless in this occasion and now let's talk about traction control one of the best things in gt sport if you're a beginner i would seriously suggest do not go with traction control you'll just get used to it and your lap times will be a little bit slower uh, you might feel comfort comfortable with the traction control on but seriously suggest just try to just try to not use it and stay without traction control at all times and i'll show you why so this example will show you guys what are the effects of traction control in each occasion so first uh yeah i used uh, zero traction control and minus five brake and balance and in the two two other examples i'll use uh plus two traction control and plus five so it's actually not plus it's two and five so yeah let's go and check out the example and this is the example that i was previously talking about on the left hand side you have traction control at 2 and on the right hand side you have traction control at 5. Pretty obvious but I wanted to say it. And yeah, you can. I was I was actually surprised by, the, by this whole situation as uh, you can see the traction control at 5 had pretty much the same effect as traction control 2. I was seriously surprised so I did another example and another comparison in this um, in those fast turns in the I would I like to call them the yeses but I'm not really I'm not really sure if they are called the yeses so let's go and see that example okay now into the yeses uh, two on the left and five traction control on the right hand side as you can see uh, the line was pretty much the same but the traction control at five was in my I'm, I mean, this is just my example, but it was actually quicker and I'm not really sure why. So uh, traction control at two should be a little bit quicker, but apparently plus five was uh, plus five was better on this track. So I don't know what to tell you guys. So uh, yeah, two and five seem to be working the exact same. So yeah, just don't know what to tell you guys about this one so i was a little bit surprised that two and five are equal and maybe the plus five is even better than the two and this is the example that i took so this is a zero traction control here and two and five on the right corner so down below you you will actually see the difference and this is in every corner not not uh, sure that i want to uh, talk too much about it. It's pretty obvious. So you will see uh, the Delta here So the traction control at zero was uh, fastest you can see by the line on the left hand side the Traction control 2 was um, almost the same as traction control 5 But in some occasions the traction control 5 was quicker, but 
it may be the line, it may be some uh, situation that I'm not uh, kind of used to it, but yeah, I'll just try to use the traction control at zero and do it like that. So starting from the beginning at traction control zero helps a ton. So it builds your speed, so it builds your references, you will learn more, and in general, it's better to start with zero. So guys, I hope you like this video, and I hope you like... Uh, I hope you like my channel and all of that stuff that I usually post track guide videos. And I apologize if my English is not so perfect, but I'm trying my best. And in other videos, I'll just try to even better and just try to explain every in any situation, even in more detail. So guys, thank you again. Thank you for watching my videos and I'll catch you guys next time.